So let's review this capture here from the Pico a bit closer. These blue spikes here from the Nissan are up about 1.72 volts. This is high enough that the issue can trigger the fault. Remember the limit was at 1.4 volt. And these spikes are clearly over 1.4. Scroll a bit back. Here I, I have one very high peak. Here also the red trace Renault nothing like on the blue trace all is about the same at 1.28 volts this is low the ECU will not trigger a fault with this voltage the ECU is happy but at 1.5 the ECU is not happy so the next question is the sensor output Yeah, are these spikes real or are they caused by another thing? We have some variables here. Keep in mind, we have a jumped timing chain. This causes back pressure to the intake. This is a, this is a very possible reason for these spikes here. Another thing. I have connected my charger, this can be a problem as well. Chargers making noise and spike on the power, power lines. Uh, but I don't write this down. What else can it be? The sensor itself. But for now, I want to make a measurement with the Pico, a three-channel three measurement. On the first channel, the output signal from the sensor. On the second channel, the 5 volt reference. On the third channel, sensor ground to chassis ground. I want to make sure that all supply voltage and ground are clean and these spikes are coming out from the sensor and not from anywhere else. Let's do this. Now setting up the picoscope again. On channel 1 I have the output from the sensor, 0 to 2 volt is ok. Channel B is my 5 volt reference. I select 10 volt range. Channel 3 is my ground to ground. 200 millivolts should be more than enough. So let's start the scope. But it doesn't. Okay, scope is set up. I can see on the green line, which is ground to ground, it's a bit noisy. About 10 millivolts. So let's start the car and see what we get. Interesting! The red line is the 5 volt reference and I have spikes on the red line as well. Exactly at the same time when the spikes appear on the output of the sensor. Hmm. And on the ground as well. Oh, what, what happened now? Now the spikes disappeared after some time the engine was running. Interesting. Put some cursors in here. 1.2 volt, this is okay. Huh. The spikes on the red trace are also gone. Let's repeat this test. Start the engine again and see if the spikes coming back. Of course, they are back after restarting the engine. Very interesting stuff is going on here. Now let's wait how long it goes until they disappear. And let's see if the code comes back when the spikes are gone. 
with the scan tool. I have to connect the scan tool first. Spikes are still there. Now they disappeared. Next time I must measure the time how long the spikes are existing. But first I want to clear the code and see if the code comes back. The code coach must be present now. Correct. Erase it. Oh no, I cannot erase while the engine is running. Bam! What can I do? I can... Aha, I can uh, simulate the 5 volt reference with my power supply and not from the car. And let's see if the ECU is happy then. Let's do this. Okay, now I make the 5 volt reference with my power supply here. 2 amps should be enough and let's see if this noise is still present now now I have a clean 5 volt let's start the car but first erase the codes okay no codes start the car Let's see how the voltage looks now on the scope. Oh, I have still some spikes. Not good. Let's see if it makes any difference. No, my power supply cannot move out the spikes here. Let's unplug the sensor and see if the spikes are gone. No. These spikes coming from the 5 volt reference somewhere else. Let's... <laughs> now the hard nut is to find out from where the spikes come from. So now to chasing this problem down, I simply going and unplugging some stuff which can be on the 5 volt reference circuit and see if the spikes are gone let's do this okay check this out spikes are there unplugged spikes are gone haha reconnect again Spikes are there. One plug. Spikes are gone. Engine is running. No excessive spikes. Read codes. No code for the boost sensor so far. Stop the engine and start again. No spikes. Read codes. Oh man. That's not the problem. So now the engine is running for a while, all spikes are gone from the exhaust gas pressure sensor and this is the signal when the sensor is plugged in to the throttle body. Now remove the sensor and I have almost nothing. Some little spikes but they are not important here. Plug it back in. Yeah, definitely pressure reading on the sensor. And I have positive pressure here on the intake. This is not normal. This is because the jump timing changed. 
So now I have the spikes back. Then there is out of the hole. Let's see. No. Damn. At the end of the day I'm feeling really stupid. Think about it, why? These high spikes here, they are definitely over the limit, as you see seen before. But, let's see how long they exist. Maybe, let's see, put the cursor here at the beginning of the spike and at the end. Maybe here, it's one millisecond, one thousand of a second. Think about how long it goes when you give full blast on this engine, uh, full throttle. It takes about two to three seconds maybe until the boost pressure is built up to this maximum. And this here is a thousand times shorter, this bike. The ECU will not take care about this high spike here because it's too short. The ECU has a filter inside that smooths out these this little short events. The ECU only cares about the mean value uh, of this signal. Let's he see here. Here, this is the signal with the mean value. This hump here in the middle and these humps here. They are important for the peak, uh, for, for the ECU. It was a total overkill with my theory to tracing down these bikes. It completely makes no sense. The only reason why this error appears is because positive pressure here on the intake caused by a jumped timing chain. I hope you learned something and I learned definitely something. I should use my brain before I dig in, in a rabbit hole. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.